People struggle to know who they are. They struggle to know their value and what they're doing here. And they wonder what's going to happen next. And my experiences give me, give me a unique perspective. I was an emergency physician for 25 years. I was a fellow of the American College of Emergency Physicians. I worked at a level one trauma center. And so we saw the sickest and the most severely injured patients. They were flown in from our state and, and surrounding states. I walked into the ER once to start my shift and I was logging onto the computer when I felt this profound spiritual presence. I'd had enough experiences, I recognized what it was. And I knew that there was a woman around the corner in the, in the next room that a team was trying to resuscitate and I understood it was her. And she asked me for help. There was an empty space near the gurney where there wasn't uh, somebody crowded around her and I just walked over and gently rested my hand on her leg because I learned that touch is so important in these experiences. I want to make it explicitly clear I had absolutely no responsibility for her medical care. There was another physician there. He was running the code. He was giving orders. People were doing chest compressions. She was intubated. I had nothing to do with her medical care. And as I touched her leg, she asked me if she could leave. Mind you, this is silently asking me. She's intubated, she's unconscious. And I thought, why are you asking me? But as I thought that, something came to me from some eternal place and gave me the words to speak. And I silently communicated back to her. And I said, if you think it's time to go and you feel it's the right thing to do, then I think it's probably okay. And she rose up out of her body and she stood in the air above the gurney. And she looked to be about half the age of the body she'd just come out of. And she expressed her profound gratitude. And then she left. It's been my experience when these things happen that there's this profound flow of knowledge that's just kind of floating in the ether. And, and it's not forcing itself upon you, but you can take it in and you can experience it. And you can know things that you never contemplated in, in, in an instant. Um, it's like there's this veil is drawn back and there's no more impediment in communication. I went to see a patient uh, who was involved in a minor motor vehicle accident. It was a motorcycle crash, actually. He was wide awake, he said he felt fine, he wanted to get up and leave. I examined his helmet, it had a few scratches, but nothing to suggest a serious injury. There's actually well-studied criteria about how to evaluate somebody to decide whether they need either a head scan or x-rays of their neck after such an injury. He did not meet any criteria to require any kind of imaging, and I was about to let him get up and leave. When I had this profound feeling, maybe even a knowing, that he needed a head scan. And I talked with him about it. I said, you don't meet any criteria. I don't have a good medical reason to do this scan, but I feel strongly that it should be done. And he joked about it. He said, okay, doc, go ahead and order the unnecessary test. And I did. Uh, normally, I'd get results back uh, via the computer 30 minutes later. In this case, the radiologist called me about 15 minutes later. He told me that there was arterial blood s s accumulating inside the man's skull so rapidly they could see it swirling on the scan. When I went back down to see the patient, he was already be becoming sleepy or somnolent. But because I worked in a level one trauma center, I had an on-call neurosurgeon and I called the neurosurgeon and 15 minutes later, the patient was upstairs in the OR getting a burr hole, which sounds like a critical thing, but he was probably back on his motorcycle two weeks later. If I'd have let him go home that night without any imaging, he would have almost certainly died. And I don't know what communicated to me or how uh, that prompted me to, to order that scan, but I'd like to think that somebody or something had a sense of what was going on and communicated that to me. 
You see, if, if we have to understand everything before we can act, and this is, I'm keenly aware of what I'm saying here as a scientist, as a physician, as somebody that was trained in Western medicine. If I have to understand, if, if I had to be able to explain to that person on that motorcycle that I thought he had an epidural hematoma with absolutely no evidence to suggest that that was the case, and I relied purely on science and what I could prove, he'd be dead. Now, I'm not suggesting that we do things willy-nilly, that we don't give science its weight. What I'm saying is that there is something much more. There is something bigger, more powerful, more universal, more connected than what we have discovered with science to date.